Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Get Smarter and Make Stuff. And this is my other laboratory, my other shop, if you will. It's my office where I uh, do my day job, but also where I do quite a bit of uh, things related to the shop, including all of my uh, online uh, type stuff, all of my software type stuff, all of my uh, modeling. And that's actually what I want to talk to you about today. Um, I stumbled across a pretty cool tool that I hadn't run into before, so I thought I would uh, give you a look at it and tell you how to use it. got Fusion open here and I'm going to show you something that I do quite a lot which is I want to work with some object I found on, on the web as a uh, STL, a mesh file. So you can go and insert mesh and uh, let's see where was I, it was over in here and let's look at this uh, Leonardo model. Um, model of Leonardo da Vinci, you've probably seen me work with this a little bit um, if you've seen many of my videos on uh, making uh, silicone molds. Um, and you can kind of tell by looking at it, it has a lot of uh, vertices, um, which means that if I try to do anything complicated with it, Fusion is going to be pretty slow. Uh, for instance, if I try to uh, convert it to um, a Fusion mesh, um, let's say OK, and that is going to take a while. My computer is going to go away, the beach ball is going to spin, and um, I'm going to be waiting. And I've had to wait quite a long time, minutes at times, I've had to kill Fusion seemingly meshes above a certain level of complexity just don't work. This one will probably work in a, a few minutes. I did try it a little while ago and it seemed to be fine, but you know, it's sort of moderate complexity mesh. Um, and a lot of times I don't really need all of the detail that's on here. Uh, you know, you can see that there's quite a few faces here and that might be something that's important for me if I'm trying to print a highly detailed model. Although at that point I may just be printing the model directly, but if I want to work with it in Fusion, say split it, or you know it's a part that I'm uh, found somewhere that I want to modify, um, I don't necessarily need all of those uh, faces. And you can see that it is just about done here, and that was I don't know maybe a minute, <laughs> a minute of sitting here waiting for Fusion to to crank through and figure out how to make a, a proper Fusion object out of this that I can then do normal fusion-like things. Um, okay, there we go. And I actually went ahead and cut out some of the waiting because it did take quite a bit longer still. All right, but now I have this, uh, you know, this can, this version that I can work with. Uh, but it's got a lot of faces, and um, that can really be a problem in fusion. Uh, now, there are a lot of programs out there that you can use to manipulate meshes, but I came across this one, and I thought it was pretty interesting um, in that it's very, very simple, which I like. So this is called Mesh Simplification. You can see the URL up here. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. It's a... Uh, uh, either off the screen or very tiny, but um, I'll put a link down below. And uh, this is it's a WebAssembly program, which is sort of interesting from a technical perspective, although we're not going to talk about that. And you can give it an STL, and it will simplify it. So let's go ahead and grab the uh, that same STL. I'm going to open that. And then I'm going to set it to, say, uh, 10%. I'm going to really, really crunch it down and click Simplify, and it's done. It's very, very fast. Um, and if you can see here, but it says it started out with... Uh, 76,000 triangles and the output is 7,600 triangles, so that is indeed 10%. Uh, we can download that, I'll drop it here, and then if I go back over to um, Fusion, and let's just grab that reduced mesh, and uh, we put it here, here we go, grab him, and I don't know if you can see this or not, but it is got a lot less triangles. Now, it also, of course, has less detail. Um, but it still maintains the basic shape pretty well, and that might be a trade-off that I am willing to make. Um, and indeed, if we go ahead and do that same operation from before that took minutes and minutes and minutes, namely convert mesh, and say, I want to pick this, I'm going to say OK, and just do a basic conversion, uh, whereas last time that took like a minute, um, here it is done in a few seconds. Um, and again, you know, this is clearly less detailed, right? Like we've given up detail, but that's actually the trade-off we want to make. Um, like I said, there are other tools that will do this, but I kind of just came across this one, and I like it, and I, this is the kind of thing that I do a lot, so thought I would show it to you. Um, obviously, you can set this slider wherever you want. Um, you really pick the level of detail that works for you to make the trade-off around speed that you that you need. There is one thing to watch out for. If you happen to choose a file that uh, has an extension of uppercase STL, or maybe doesn't have the extension all lowercase. I don't know if you can see that, but this one's called badname.uppercase STL. 
if I say open, it's going to say file is not OBJ or STL. You have to have on OS X, which is what I'm on, uh, Mac OS, uh, at least the extension has to be lowercase STL for this tool to work. I don't know if that's true on Windows. I don't know if that's true on Linux, but if you get this error that says file is not OBJ or STL and it looks like you do have an STL, it may be the extension. Well, I hope you found that interesting and or useful. Uh, I know I certainly will be using this tool in the future to simplify meshes. If you liked it, uh, leave a comment, leave a like, that'd be great. But actually what would be even better would be go and find some small YouTube channel who's trying to get started, who's you know, trying to, clearly trying to make a living off this thing and give them a comment and a like. I am doing this for fun. Uh, so while I enjoy hearing from people and uh, don't mind the exposure that the channel gets through likes and comments, there are people out there who could really, really use the boost. And uh, one thing I've noticed in just doing this for a little while is that comments really, really feed the algorithm. So uh, go find a small YouTube channel who's doing something interesting and drop them a comment. Anything at all. Just say, hey, I really like what you're doing. It really will help them out. Uh, certainly appreciate you watching and uh, looking forward to learning more with you so we can all get smarter and make stuff.